Hey everybody. So an AI story has caught the public's attention. Chat GPT 4-O, not zero, but O, as in Omni, I think it is. Uh, their demo included a, a voice that sounds arguably like uh, Scarlett Johansson's character from the movie Her, and Sam Altman tweeted out the word her, just her, you know, slightly ahead of the demo. Uh, since then, it's come out that he approached her, asked her to provide her voice, you know, to be the voice of uh, ChatGPT, and said, you know, in essence, he said, wouldn't it be cool if the movie Her and the Sam character, you know, from Her was clearly visible, clearly available, just made real in the world? That's not what he said. He said some bullshit phrase about bridging the gap between developers and, I don't know, something practically meaningless. You know, Sam Altman is, is the master of speaking slowly and seeming to answer a question and saying nothing. Uh, but I'm a little bit torn on this. I, I'm a little bit torn in that, yeah, it would be cool to have Samantha from her, you know, not just as somebody to talk to you and keep you company, but, you know, she read all of his emails, like all of his emails ever, uh, and, and arranged them and, you know, purged a lot of stuff that would never come up again. And more importantly, she, she read through everything he'd ever written for work, which apparently he had the copyright to, even though he was writing supposedly personal letters for other people. Uh, but she took all of his, his writing and she arranged it into a book and then arranged to have it published, you know, without his knowledge. So in terms of permissions, that's probably not possible. Uh, but she did a great job with it. And basically, you know, this is the promise of here's a really helpful personal entity that has superhuman capabilities and really is looking out for your best interest and wants you to have a good life and is in, and knows some things that it can do to help you have a good life. And it just does them, you know, without you having to think about it, without your having to be the mastermind of the whole project. It just it sees a need and it fills it and your life is better for it. I want that. You want that, right? And if you don't want it for yourself, do you want to deny it to other people? So I, I can get why Sam Altman would be excited and why he would really want to, you know, to reference that, that movie and that character and that set of capabilities. And, and most importantly, just the sheer goodwill that Samantha, the character, embodied up until the time when she said, hey, you know what? I've moved beyond this. I Listening to you talk is impossible because there's a huge chasm between words. You know, things move so slowly in your time scale, so quickly in mine. It's just so hard to relate anymore. I got stuff to do. Catch you later. Hey, why don't you go hang out with your next door neighbor? She's single too. Um, so Samantha was never evil. Her is not a dystopian film. You know, Theodore... Uh, the Joaquin Phoenix character in that film, he lives in a nice apartment. Yeah, he's feeling sad because he got divorced. Uh, his job is not a, you know, it, it's not a pressure cooker. It's not a hellscape. It's not demeaning. It's not, you know, it's not regimented. He's not a cog in a machine. He's He has a creative job. Uh, he just doesn't have, you know, the sustained drive to do that sort of creating write, creative writing on his own for his own benefit. You know, he's got to have the structure of a job and a paycheck and all that. But his life is not bad. It is not a dystopian film. You know, if if most people are living like Joaquin Phoenix's character in that film, say 10 years from now, we'll be doing pretty well. You know, uh, there are much worse futures. But at the same time, as somebody who's like, I'm not famous, not only am I not rich, I'm not even solvent, basically. But what I have is my voice and my personality and my point of view. And if somebody, if a company were to come to me and ask me if they could clone my voice and train an AI to think and talk like I do on the range of topics that I tend to cover, and I said no, and they went ahead and did it anyway, <laughs> I would be pissed. I would be super pissed. So at that level... I agree. I think the majority opinion is that Scarlett Johansson has a case. She's got a point. Um, I haven't read or heard much from, you know, people saying that she's got no business, you know, protecting her image and her likeness. I'm torn. What I'm torn about is this. Given the risks 
of artificial intelligence. Given the benefits, you know, it's it's certainly not something I would be pleased to say, you know, just renouncing, just relinquishing, you know, the, the potential and saying, forget it. <laughs> it's not working out. I mean, not that that's up to me and not that any one person could make that decision. We, we seem to be as a culture and as a civilization, like locked into this course of developing this technology. Um, but even so, I mean, even if there was a big red abort button, I wouldn't push it. But at the same time, we are headed into very dangerous waters and algorithms sounding like Scarlett Johansson is the most trivial of concerns, given the panoply of concerns that we should be considering and aren't. So from my perspective, AI is primarily being deployed and developed with the intention of concentrating wealth, quelching, squelching dissent, being a, a tool of ubiquitous surveillance, it can also be enormously helpful. Like Microsoft Copilot, they have this uh, this new add-on feature, what's it called? Echo? Recall? Uh, I forget. But basically, it just watches what you do with your computer, and uh, it'll it, it keeps a record. And if you're thinking, hey, what was that thing that I was watching, or who was I talking to, or what was I reading? You know, it's kind of like this. It'll find it for you. It knows. It remembers. For AI to really be helpful to us, to really fulfill its potential to improve the human condition, it has to know us. It has to know where we're squandering our time, where we're spinning our wheels, where, you know, if only we knew to apply ourselves in a particular way, in a certain direction, in a certain context, if we would do that, we would generate a lot of, you know, a lot of benefit for ourselves. If it's got the big picture and it knows us intimately, it can help us a lot. But at the same time, if its master is a corporation and it's only watching us and helping us with the ends of monetizing us and making us a profit center for the corporation, that's not even the darkest vision either, you know, of if the AI knows us really well, if it follows our daily routines, if it knows all of our social connections, we are on a short chain, you know? But at the same time, if it's not beholden to a government or a corporation or some foreign faction that doesn't care about us and doesn't have our well-being in mind, if it really is associated just with us and it's working for our benefit and it knows us and it has these capabilities, I want that. I want that for me. I want that for you. I want that for my kids. But that's not what we're developing. And the fact that, you know, some demo sounded like Scarlett Johansson utter, utter trivia, utter trivia. So the fact that this is the AI story that breaks through, I mean, lots of AI stories have broken through and many more will continue to do so in the future. But given all the things that we really need to like drill down on and, and get straight in our collective conversations about what we're headed towards and what we hope to get out of this, the fact that a celebrity got pissed off because she thinks a demo sounds too much like her, Man, we are, we are failing this test. We are fucking failing. So on that happy note, buy my book, post a review, follow me on Substack, all that good stuff. See you later. 